A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. Yedigir, how to become a hero of the time. Emir from the legend. In a web of intrigues. Battle of Thrones. A revenge on history. There, where the waters of the Yaik flowed, where the Golden Horde was, where the Kipchak and Bulgar lived, the Tatar ruled over the country, and the Khan named Toktamush. Epic of Yidigir. Immortalized in the epic of many people, three legendary characters of ancient times, they lived in reality at the end of the 14th century, during the sunset of the Empire of Genghis Khan, a redistribution of the world. When the Golden Horde disintegrated, there were such political upheavals that even now modern science cannot fully understand them. Emir Timur, Khan Toktamush, and a mysterious character of troubled times, Emir Yedikir. A story about three famous people or how to become a hero of the time. During this time, there was chaos. There was a political struggle, everyone against everyone. Yedike played a unifying role in Turkic history. Not only the epic, Yedike, but many monuments of epic heritage are part of both Kazakh and Nogai culture. Chapter 1, Emir from the Legend. The most remarkable historical epic is Yedike, the one mentioned in Toktamush, the very Emir who destroyed Vietatus near Voskla and controlled the horde under the rule of four Khans, Chokhan Vadikhano. It's interesting that the legend of Yedige exists in different variations among many Turkic people, approximately 50 variants, and it is not by chance. Such a geography of the distribution of this folklore epic, Yedige, speaks about those components of Nagai that have become part of another people. Along with this, the historical background in all variants of the epic is a struggle of Toktamush and Yedike. Each begins classically with the origin of the main character. The epic Yedike describes the genealogy of the founder of the Nogai dynasty, Yedike, from Abu Kabakra, the first righteous caliph through Baba Tukles. And Baba Tukles fell in love with the swan girl. They had a son, Kutlakai who became a Burkut tamer and served for Khan Toktamush. Then the Khan got angry and he decided to execute him, but Kutlikai managed to escape. Then he met a forest woman and they had a son, Yedike. A legendary historical character who was present at the time when the Golden Horde was disintegrating. There are not many epic stories about Yedige. It's known that he belonged to the Mungut tribe and it's believed that he was born in 1352. According to one version, the almighty Emir was a simple shepherd at first. He was very dark, of medium height, of a heavy physique, brave, fearsome, high-minded, generous with a pleasant smile, with insight and ingenuity, a fan of scientists and noble people, he got close with the pious and fakirs, talked with them in the most affectionate expressions and humorous hints, fasted at night and rose to prayer. Ahmed ibn Muhammad ibn Arab Shah. All chroniclers are unanimous. Yedike had a strong personality, but his rivals were also worthy. Dr. Mish, who united the Golden Horde and the third iconic character of the story, is also mentioned in the epic, Emir Timur. Chapter 2, In a Web of Intrigues. Then Khan Toktamish turned to the nine heroes and said, Go, cheat and bring Yedike. The epic of Yedike. What happened between Toktamish and Yedike is not clear. The Persian historian Sharaf ad-Din writes that they appear simultaneously on the historical scene. Father Toktamish, the ruler of Mangistar, was killed by Uruz Khan. 
He then ruled in the Golden Horde. The young prince escaped. Dr. Mush, having reached the bank of the Sidaria, crossed the river, was wounded, and fell on a reed. The road accidentally led Yediké directly to those thickets. He saw Toktamish in an unconscious state. Yediké staunched the wound of Toktamish, gave him food, drink, and clothes, and accompanied him with respect and honor to Emir Timur. Sharaf Ad-Din, Ali Yazdi. According to some historical sources, Yediké also fled from Oris Khan for an unknown reason. For a while, they both served Timur, and in general, have become related. Toktamish's sister became the wife of Yediké, but there was a significant difference between them. Yediké was not a descendant of Genghis Khan, in fact, just like Timur himself. Toktamish, who, first of all, was a descendant of Genghis Khan, naturally believed that Timur was an illegitimate ruler. Toktamish wanted to become the head of the Golden Horde, and he was helped by Emir Timur and Yediké. Toktamish even appointed Yediké as Bekyari Bek, which means that he became the head of Beks, who only obey the monarch. And then something happened between them. This night, Yedike, who served for Timur, noticed that between the Kipchak population, there was a disagreement and he conspired with them. He rose against Toktamush and began to seek a chance to kill him, since after the death of Toktamush, the kingdom would pass to him. Toktamush learned about this and wanted to catch and kill him himself, but Yedike escaped. Gonzalez de Clavijo. Allegedly, Toktamish sent hired assassins and even tried to poison him. Yedike survived and spent the rest of his life fighting his former companion. According to the Arab historian Arab Shah, he escaped from Toktamish and began to incite Timur to revenge, saying, here's the target, you will catch it easily. And he achieved his goal. By then, Toktamish had a quarrel with Timur, and this sudden enmity of the Emir and Khan could bring Yedike good dividends. Timur raised Toktamish to the throne. Timur, we can say, overthrew him. But nature abhors a vacuum. It was taken by Emir Yedige, who at some time strengthened the Golden Horde state. In 1391, Timur set out his first campaign to punish the traitor, and Yedige became a guide in his army. The rebellious Khan was defeated. Timur ordered to knock out the famous inscription on the stone about that. But Yedige, having dealt with Toktamish, also did not want to obey the all-powerful Emir. And now, Senor Yedige is a very powerful man, and they became great enemies. Timur came to fight him with his army, but Yedige did not wait for him and fled. Yedige has more than 200,000 horsemen in the horde at all times. Gonzalez de Clavijo. That's how three sworn companions became sworn enemies. Chapter 3, Battle of Thrones. At a time when Timur's warriors with wagons full of procurements, returning after the victory over Toktamish, moved in the opposite direction as well, by the order of Yedike. By the way, according to one of the versions, Yedike himself was born somewhere in the Kazakh steppes, just on the shores of the Ural River. In 1391, he separates the Mangistki yurt from the Golden Horde, a union of nomads at the head of the Mangids. The founder of the Nogai Horde chose the most suitable time of resettlement. Perhaps he was the mastermind of everything himself. When Timur was returning from the campaign, Yidiga secretly sent a messenger to his relatives as well as to all the tribes with the order that they should leave their homeland and go to places where it's difficult and dangerous to reach. They would not stay for more than two days. Otherwise, Timur would be able to catch up and defeat them. Vadim Trepavlo, the history of the Nogai Horde. And when the great Emir turned his gaze to the people of Yedige, it was too late. Everyone had already left. It was not profitable to send an army after them. It's not profitable. The land has already been fairly battered by Tamerlan's troops during the campaign against Toktamush, so there was no punitive operation. Yedige contributed to the concentration of the so-called tribes in the territory of Yaik. 
Having learned that there's no need to pay taxes, the people, exhausted by war, reached the Beklabet estate, and soon the number of subjects of Toktamush decreased sixfold. From all sides, the horde converged there, and the yurt of Yerike was filled with people. Vadim Trepavlov, the history of the Nogai horde. A relatively quiet life began in the interfluve of the Ember and Yaik rivers. Sarajchik served as the capital of Nagai Horde for 250 years. Nogai people had a semi-nomadic way of life. In the winter, they carried around Sarajchik, but in the Astrakhan region, they gathered around the villages that were founded by them, such as Sitovka, Kadish Taivka, Small Aral. But at that time, the Nogai Horde did not become a separate state. It was believed that it was part of the Golden Horde, which, in one way or another, was also ruled by Emir Yedige. He could not become a Khan himself, therefore he appointed those who ruled pleased him. Since according to the unbeknownst tradition, only descendants of Genghis Khan could be Khans. Those who dared to contradict him, he removed, though insurrection or in other ways. After the final displacement of Toktamish from the throne in 1395, the line of Golden Horde Khans followed. Historians often call them the puppets of the Emiyedike. He was such an influential person, Emir Yendike, a very famous figure. However, Toktamish did not give up the desire to regain the Golden Horde throne. He was looking for allies all the time. The Lithuanian ruler, Vitaut, was one of them, but Yedike and his protege Khan of the Golden Horde, Tugluk Simur, won. In 1399, the army of Vitautus and Toktamish was defeated by the troops of the Golden Horde under the command of Yedike and Tugluk Tumur. And then, at the beginning of 1405, Toktamish decided to reconcile with Timur, tried to persuade the great emir to fight with Yerike. It's not known how the next alliance ended, but in February of the same year, Tamalan suddenly died in Otra. It was said that Timur was poisoned. Whether Yerike was involved in Emir's death is unknown, but the power of the omnipotent Beklabek greatly increased. However, Toktamish did not want to give up. The battle between Toktamush and Yedike did not cease, and the eyes of peace, like the eyes of fate, pretended to be blind, and did not cease to close to reconcile them with each other. It came to the point that they fought among themselves 15 times. Ahmed ibn Muhammad ibn Arab Shah. In the 15th battle, Yedike's army was defeated. He nearly died himself, and in the 16th battle, Toktamush was killed. According to the legend, Toktamish's head was cut off and it was brought here to be buried. But to refute or confirm this legend is already impossible. None of the once existing burials in Sarashik remained. The sons of Toktamish, to the pleasure of Yedige, did not get along with each other. They mercilessly killed each other in the struggle for power. However, one of them still avenged his father. In 1419, a clever Beklabek, who was often called the ruler of Deshti Kipchak, was killed near Sarashik. He was 67 years old. One of the brilliant descendants of Toktamish Jelaldidin appeared. Disasters became more complicated and the importance of Yedige weakened. The turmoil and strife between the kings of the Kipchak territory continued until finally wounded Yedige had drowned. He was dragged from the river near Sarayshik and was thrown to the mercy of fate. Ahmed ibn Muhammad ibn Arab Shah. Yedige ruled Desht affairs for about 20 years. Arab Shah wrote, the days of his reign were a bright spot on the forehead of centuries, and the nights of his dominion are a bright streak in the face of time. Epilogue, a revenge on history. After the death of Yedige, his descendants continued his policy style of puppet mastery. They began to educate young princes in the directions they needed, and the independent state Nogai Horde appeared only with the grandson of Yedige. The dynasty created by Yedike wasn't related to Genghis Khan at all. Therefore, there's a myth or a legend about legitimizing this dynasty. And one of the forms was, of course, the epic Yedike. 
Khans trembled when they heard my name, and only I could take the throne. The epic Yedike 